Hello, welcome to this week's Midweek Connection. I'm Todd Jordan. I serve as senior pastor here at Strawbridge United Methodist Church. I'm delighted that you have joined me once again for our Midweek Connection. So this Sunday, I'll be preaching from John chapter 3, uh, specifically verses 14 through 21. I invite you to take a look at that chapter. Um, the whole chapter deals with a conversation between uh, Jesus and a Pharisee named Nicodemus. So in the midst of that conversation, uh, Jesus references a story that happens in Numbers 21. So this is sort of a prelude to the sermon coming up on Sunday, a little bit of background information. Uh, what is that story that Jesus references in John chapter 3? It is from Numbers 21, verses 4 through 9, and it's not that long, so I'll read it. This is what happens. Um, just to kind of catch you up in Numbers 21, Moses has led the people out of slavery in Egypt. They are now wandering in the wilderness. This is something that takes place while, while they're in the wilderness. Uh, scripture says, from Mount Hor, they set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom, but the people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? They complained. For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent, set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it upon a pole. And whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. When Jesus references this, he connects Moses lifting the serpent, the bronze serpent up in order to save the people who had bitten by snakes um, he connects that with his own, what will happen with him, his own crucifixion, the, the, his death on the cross, um, which will save us from our sins. Um, so when I read that on Sunday, you'll have an understanding of what Jesus is talking about. Um, but what seems to be happening in the wilderness in Numbers 21 is the people are losing their faith in God, losing their trust in Moses. They're complaining, and, and, and you might have noticed it says, there's no food, no water, and we detest this miserable food. So in other words, they're complaining that there's no food, but then they concede, well, okay, there is food, we just don't like it. Um, so you get a sense of, of okay, maybe the, the, the people are being a little unreasonable here. But then this, this this sort of shocking response from God to send these serpents in to bite people and take their lives seems harsh. Um, but then Moses, the people confess, Moses prays, and God says, hey, create this serpent uh, out of bronze, put it on a pole so that the people can see it and live. So the question is, when we read this passage, is it a passage about God's punishment or it is a passage about God's mercy? And on the one hand, we could say, well, God sent the serpents to the complaining people that took a lot of lives. But how does Jesus use it? Jesus uses it as a way to foreshadow what he will do on a cross. So to me as a pastor, I have to interpret this the way Jesus interprets it and shed on it the light that Jesus does. And that is, I don't read this as a passage that um, warns against a vindictive God. I read this as a passage that says, God is a God that wants us to have life. 
that wants us to have abundance in life, that wants to raise us up beyond uh, our complaints, um, to, to, to raise us beyond, that, uh, the, beyond our problems, um, so that we see ourselves not as victims, but as victors. And that we have a God who much rather prefers to save life than to take it. Um, at any rate, I'd invite you to take a look at uh, Numbers 21. I'd invite you to take a look at John chapter 3. Look what Jesus says about it and make those comparisons uh, yourself. But my takeaway is this, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever should believe in him would not perish but have eternal life. That's the God I worship. And that's the God we'll find um, whenever we look to scripture. So uh, thank you for joining me and I look forward to seeing you in worship this Sunday.